Yeah, you know, I just didn't click it hard enough. Uh, all right. So today's goal is to figure out how the rest of the semester is going. Um, this is our schedule as of right now. Today, we are talking about what on earth I'm looking for in the paper. Um, then next week, we're going to have two topics on, or two days on large language models, so things like ChatGPT. The Tuesday before Thanksgiving, I don't know what the hell we're going to do. The final two classes, we're going to reserve those for doing presentations. These ones are going to be question mark, question mark, question mark. So before I get to the question marks, um, let's just, let me think, how do I want to do this? Uh, Yes. So we have to do presentations for. Let's just start. Let's start with this. So here's the way it's going to work. Um, I'm pulling up my phone because my phone has the original grading percentages on it, and that's what I want to go with. So here's the way that I originally thought of it: is basically, you all have to write a big ass term paper. Um, oftentimes, it is helpful when you're writing a big ass term paper to have thought about it in advance, and. The best ways of doing that is to have to write a part of it and also to present some of your ideas to other people who aren't you. Now, so this is what these presentations were designed to be, is you present your ideas in any form of dunnedness, not a word, but fuck it, uh, that you are comfortable with. And so... The way I was thinking of this is if you have an entire paper and you want to like give it to people and ask them to spend this class reading it over and give you feedback, awesome. If you are just like, I have two different ideas, I think they're kind of cool, but I don't know which one to write about, you can do that in your presentation. If you're like, I figured out two thirds of my paper, but I've got this one paragraph and I really could use people's ideas on it. Um, what do you think? I'm going to present it. This is basically just for you. Now, the other part of it being just for you, though, is let me actually find the percentages. So this is the way that it was originally set up overall grade wise. 50% of it was going to be the full final term paper. So like half your grade was going to be based on this one paper. 10% um, was going to be based on an abstract, which is just like you write up a plan of what on earth you want to say and turn it in before the final things do like a couple of weeks ahead. And then 10% was going to be just for presenting your ideas to your classmates. Now, I'm willing to change these percentages around a little bit. And by that, I mean, um, some of you, I think, don't want to present again. It's going to cause you, like, don't want to present your ideas. It's going to cause you more stress. And so what's going to be most helpful for you is to not do this at all. Now, a lot of you, like, I am, I encourage everyone to do a presentation just because it's very easy. And if you do it, you'll get 100% on it. But if you're somebody who, because you've got stuff at the end of the semester and you can't do it, if you were to cancel that out, you could then move the grade percentages where it'd be 5% here and 5% here. So basically what I mean by that, this is going to make more sense in a little bit. What I mean, though, is that now the term paper would be worth 55% of your overall grade and the abstract would be worth 15%. So basically you are giving up a free 100 for flexibility and you'll probably not get a hundred on the term paper. Mm -hmm. So you are probably, it will be harder for you to get the highest grade if you don't do the presentation. But if you've got so much going on that adding a presentation in, I'm okay moving around those numbers. Does that make sense to people? It's like basically like you can divide it in other ways. Um, and I, I do it so it's five here, five here because abstract is another thing where you'll get a hundred percent on it if you do it. Now, what an abstract is, is basically let me explain what an abstract is once we talk about the full term paper. What an abstract is, is basically a short version of the full paper in which you say, this is what I'm going to write about. But basically, it's just like a miniature, partially complete paper. It's a way for me to give you some feedback before the final thing and like some guidance or some, like, I know, like, here's a resource you might want to look at to increase, stuff like that. Um, my basically like a draft. Yes, but not a full draft. If you want to do a full draft, you're welcome to, but you don't have to. Usually it's like, 
I think it says like two to three pages, but and I had double space. But if you turn in one, as long as it's helpful, again, this is for helping you so that when 50 to 55% of your grade is on the line, you're not just like shooting from the hip. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So the term paper itself, basically a capstone class is designed to be an opportunity to write something that comes as close to doing research, like professional research as it comes. It is like the one time in your minor, or if you are a philosophy major, your major in which you are really doing like research, which no one has done before or working in an area in a way no one has ever done it before. It's like a miniature thesis, like that you would spend a whole semester doing. And so because of that, it is in depth and the key things to highlight, it's an argumentative paper. So what I mean by that is you have to have something that you are trying to prove is true. What that thing can be, there are many, 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 many different options. So if you want to argue, well, really, there's anything you could argue about on this front. Um, it, you could use a, so like, I keep going back to that memes one because it was easy to talk about. It was like, here's the, my, I'm going to argue that memes are a superior form of communication, the, the best form of communication we have for the modern world. That is an argument, and it was 10 pages discussing the nature of memes and communication to do that. Another one, other ones I got were much more like, uh, I'm going to argue that when it comes to uh, language learning, Chomsky's more right than um, the non-Chomskyan. And the reason I'm going to use to show this is just looking at the poverty of the stimulus argument. Here's what the argument is. Here's why it's good. Here are the objections to it. Here's why those objections are bad. The whole point is that there's something at the end where in one sentence you can say, this paper will argue that. It's not just a descriptive paper in which you just describe the way things are. So it's not a paper of like, here's how children learn language. At age here, at age one, they do this. At age two, they do this. At age three. So it's not just describing or like, here's what it was like for Jeannie to learn a language. It's rather what Jeannie learning a language was like proves this other more general point. Does that make sense to people? All right. So how do you go about doing it? Um, there's no right way. That's the first thing I want to highlight is the the way I would typically like approach a term paper or a research paper is I just go back through the syllabus and remind myself what some of the readings were. I jot down notes of things that I found interesting in the class, or I jot down notes of things that I've always wanted to be interested in writing a paper on and think about ways in which something from the class might be able to tie into that. So if I love American football and I wanna talk about how language is used in that, I think to myself, well, how can I turn this thing that I'm interested in outside of class into a paper in which I'm arguing for something? What parts of the class could I tie that in with? Another person had like an independent interest last semester in um, liturgical languages. So like the way that religious texts get used. And so he argued that, um, this isn't something that has actually come up in our class, but one of the things that a lot of linguists say is that ling languages don't die. They're like, they're just evolving. And so he argues that his argument was there are cases of languages that have died in the case of liturgical languages and what, and liturgical, I mean like religious languages. So like religious Latin. Um, and what does that show about how language works? So it's like you take something that's at all interesting to you. Another person was preparing to be pre-law um, or she was pre-law and was preparing for law school. So she wrote hers on different styles of interpretation in legal scholarship, comparing two different ones and arguing that the right thing combines the two. Um, like a, a, a an intentionalist interpretation of the law in which you're trying to understand what is it that somebody was trying to get across and then a different interpretation which you just take the literal meaning of the words you explain what the she explained what the two are compared them and said at the end of the day you need a little bit of both so that's the sort of thing about how to go about these topics um i haven't had a chance to for those of you who did the discussion post i haven't had a chance to look them over yet what i'm going to do is i'm going to email if i read them over i'm just going to email you all and be like, yeah, this sounds like a great start or here's a tip. So expect an email from me this weekend in which I just like 
engage with what you have. And if you said, I have no fucking idea, cool, that's fine. Um, if you want to talk to me at any point, shoot me an email with any ideas you have about how you want to go about it. Um, it's a it's a big, scary project. That's the other thing I want to highlight. Ten, sitting down in a blank computer screen and being like, I have to get to 3,000 words is scary. Um, it's tough. It's scary. And I'm not expecting, I am still not great at it. I'm not expecting anybody's like, don't put that pressure on yourself if it has to be perfect. Like, I will take it as it is like engage with it and the ways that just a little bit of my grading style i uh i personally value taking intellectual risks um so if you are somebody who like wants to try something creative and because it's creative you are doing something that is not as well developed as like an ideal paper would be i will take that into consideration during the grading thing if you have a super cool idea and you want to run with it and it doesn't end up being like perfectly polished, that's okay by me. Um, I will grade that, or yeah, I will grade it according to the fact that you took a risk um, and did something like, so my vote will always be right on something you're interested in. And if you have something that you know you kind of want to write about and need a little help turning that general topic into an argumentative paper where like, here's the precise thing I'm discussing and here's what my thesis is going to be, that's what I'm here for. And I anticipate we'll be talking about this stuff a lot and I would like you all to spam me with emails if you have any questions. Um, I have become fully addicted to checking my email. So I respond pretty quickly now. Um, Rina. I would say the best advice you gave me when we were on our last healthier class is treat the reader like they're dumb. Yeah. Over explain yeah. everything. And that's a great and a lot of you, I think all of you, hopefully all of you have written a philosophy paper before, but this is really the thing. Write it for a polite way of saying as if the person reading it is a skeptic who's not going to agree with it. I much prefer saying assume that they're like an idiot. They've been concussed. They're a drunken 12 year old, like something that that like this person is not easily going to understand what you're talking about because these are complicated topics. So really explaining them out is um, a valuable thing. Now, the main reason I want to. uh the main reason that I want you all to do an abstract and like plan ahead is basically because if you're anything like me, you are going to, the odds that you bite off too little for a 10 page paper is very small. Um, you can turn just about anything into a 10 page paper with enough like focus, but sometimes it's very hard to pick a topic that wouldn't actually take a hundred pages and you just don't, recognize at first like just how much literature is out there to do a good job that you need to engage with so one thing i'll want to do and why i want to do the abstract thing is just so i can point to you or with your topics here help you pick a focus more focused topic that is um something that you aren't going to need a hundred pages to do well so uh, what would be helpful from, I'm going to open it up right now. To That's the general, like how I'm imagining this thing. At the end, you have a 10 page paper. Um, and to be clear, I am not a paper word number stickler. If you write, a, I suggest eight to 10 pages, eight to 12 pages because, or I say 10 pages because that's about how long you need to do an in-depth argument of the sort that is worthy of a 4,000 level capstone. But if you write a very dense eight page paper, I'm not going to take off for doing less than 10 pages. If you write a paper that is 16, 18, 20 pages long, as long as it's 20 pages long, because you're covering a lot of information well, and not just that you're rambling, that's also totally fine. I'm not, I want you to finish writing this paper and be like, huh, I actually found that's not completely miserable. I learned something that I think is kind of cool. And I actually think I learned, like I wrote something that I'm at least a little bit proud of. That's my goal at the end of this thing. Um, all right, let me open up to everybody. And Christy, I can see the chat. So if you have any questions, you can type in there. Uh, am I looking for references? That's Christy's first question. So for this paper, um, it is it is a research paper. So by that, I mean, I am expecting you to draw on some sort of sources, not just shoot from the hip. 
What those sources are and how many you bring in, though, is up to you. Um, so if you want to just use things we covered in class and maybe a couple things that they reference, that's fine. If you want to do a paper in which you just find a ton of articles, that's fine. Now, I am not a stickler on how you do a reference page. I don't care if you do, like, as long as I can know where to find what it is you wrote, I don't care if it's in Chicago or MLA, or you literally just say, here's an article, this is the person's name, here's what the title was. Like, I just want to be able to Google it if I think it's interesting. Um, Michael. Uh, I'm going to say for the references, though. Um, for the references, could you use the, or like the reading that you- Yes, 100%. Okay. And some of them, one thing I will suggest that might be helpful is a few of the readings come from entire books or parts of chapters. I- for most of them, I put the entire book that I acquired illegally on the internet onto the blackboard. So I would recommend you can go and try to find that um, if you need more. So if like you're working on one of the things and you're like, what was actually talked about in this other part of the reading? Um, you can go there. Some of them I didn't put up. So if you're like having trouble finding it, just email me and I can try to find some illegally hosted website that I originally got the thing from. Um, other logistically questions. I, yeah, Rena. How do you want us to format it? Like, do you want us to format it in like MLM or APA? I don't care. Whatever works best for you. It's seriously, and again, if you, if you want to practice any of yours and make sure you do your periods right and your little commas right and all that, feel free. But I'm not going to like, like if you just literally, if on the reference page you had like Chomsky aspects chapter one like that would be enough if you just had like a bunch of things like this that's totally fine just i want to know what i'm looking for and what the source is in case i want to go back and make sure that you are quoting it right or anything like that um no totally okay the main thing i want is that I need to be able, if somebody was like, why on earth did this person write this paper for that class? It can be like, oh, here's the connection to what we did in class. But it can be a very loose and tenuous connection. Like the memes paper, I think, didn't mention anything other than like what communication was. And that was the only tie in. Um, I'm trying to think. Yeah. So it doesn't have to be like there were multiple papers last semester that didn't cite a single thing we had read in class. They just found a bunch of other things that they were interested in. Um, the one, and again, I'm going to stress on this, and part of the reason I want to do the abstract is you just have to make sure that when you're doing that, it is an argumentative paper. So you, you have to find a debate that is happening or a theoretical debate that could happen and pick a side of it. So with the memes one, it's like somebody who comes along and says, memes are stupid. Well, I'm arguing against them. I'm explaining they're good. Not just like, here's what a meme is. Or like, um, there was one on linguistic savants that somebody wrote. So just like a description like a case study of somebody who is really good at language and not good at anything else, that's not going to be argumentative. But if you then say, and this guy proves that we have an innate language faculty, then it becomes argumentative. So in a big paper like this, a term paper, a lot of it is going to, a lot of the individual paragraphs are going to be descriptive because you're providing a lot of information. But the argumentative part is that you're doing those things in order to prove some larger point. Um, so like you have some claim that you want to prove to people. Uh, animals do have language and their communication is just as robust as ours. And we should say it's language because of reasons X, Y, and Z. Um, Chomsky's an idiot because blah, 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 blah. Um, ChatGPT will start speaking. Not only is ChatGPT able to speak English, it's going to become alive and conscious within a year. That's something you could argue. ChatGPT will never learn language. It's completely unlike humans. ChatGPT is going to destroy the world as we know it because it is going to remove the importance of human beings. Like even that, like you could do this or like learning how to use ChatGPT is the single most important skill a person could use in college. Yeah, I'd let you write that paper. That's tied in with something language related. Um, so I, I don't think I'm allowed to do here's a 10 page guide for all incoming freshmen about how to use chat GPT and not get caught. I don't think I'll allow that one, but like anything short of that, I think I'd let you. What about to prove our point that chat GPT is so advanced. We had chat GPT write, write the, the paper. paper. Well, 
you can, this is actually an interesting thing. You can use passages from ChatGPT, like the article we're going to be reading next week. He actually does just insert something from ChatGPT to show how human-like it is. Um, so you can do a passage, but don't do the entire thing, especially because ChatGPT is really not good at writing philosophy papers. Um, yeah, I've started in my intro classes, I've started asking ChatGPT to respond to one of my prompts from a previous semester and give it to everybody so that we can go through together and highlight all the stuff it does wrong. Um, just as like an illustration of like why ChatGPT sucks at these things. I literally wrote the whole paper and then the last chapter was like, by the way, this whole paper, except for this line, is written by a computer. But the thing is, they're not very good. That's the problem. It's yeah, like, totally ChatGPT is really good at some things and it's really bad at others, which is what we'll talk about next week. Um, like but the problem is you also though, the other issue with it, we're on like a, I'm going to 20 second tangent. If you don't know enough about the homework that you're doing such that you're asking ChatGPT, you don't have the skills required to assess if ChatGPT is doing a good job. So like, there's this thing of like, if I just ask ChatGPT, why am I doing it? Because I don't know what the fuck's going on. And then when ChatGPT spits out a piece of bullshit, I'm not going to notice that it's completely useless because I chose ChatGPT for that reason. And it also uses a lot of weird phrases, like professors are getting better and better at identifying it, at least for certain types of projects. Other ones, you can still get away with it pretty easily. All right. Um, can I use movie reference to explain my point? Yes. Uh, can I use a movie reference to explain your point, Christy? Yes, you 100% can. Um, two, can I provide a sample paper from last semester? Yes, I'm happy to. Let me just check with somebody who wrote the paper to make sure that they are okay with my presenting it to you all. Sometimes people are a little bit uncomfortable about those things. Um, so I just want to double check. But yes, I'm happy to provide uh, an example paper just so you can see what one looks like. I could even ask ChatGPT to write one that sucks so you can also see what a really sucky one looks like. Um, yeah, uh, Christy, can you email me either right now or because you're right in front of your computer or later to just remind me to ask somebody for, a, to, for permission to show a sample paper? Um, thanks so much. Uh, all right. Any more questions on this? And here's the thing for just like philosophy papers. What sort of data helps in a philosophy paper? Anything. Anything that will help you illustrate your point is fair game. It can be a made up thought experiment. It can be an actual personal anecdote. So like this was actually a couple people wrote a version of this paper last year, which if you wanted to write on this topic yourself, it was basically they did a case, and people know what case studies are. You look at a one particular case and try to draw a more general conclusion. They basically looked at the nature of se comparing second language learning to first language learning. No, it wasn't even that. It was, what can we learn about how humans learn language by examining my own experience as a second, English as a second language learner. So they basically just wrote a 10 page paper about their own journey to learning English drew conclusions from that about how learning a language works. And so like, that's another way you can do it. You can make it really personal. Um, you can make it completely abstract. Like it's really up to you how to do it. And this is where it's scary, but also where it's exciting. And I would really recommend just find something that will provide you with either the most joy or the least stress. You can like actually live personal thesis. Yeah, it can be a personal thesis. It, as long as there is an arg a claim that you are arguing for that in theory somebody else could argue against, totally fine. And as long as it can loosely fall under the umbrella of language or communication. So like if Mia wanted to write a paper on how her cat uh, communicates through its use of urine in a way that shows something sophisticated about cat psychology, awesome. And like just a case study of peeing cats to draw a conclusion about theory of mind in animals like that would be awesome um yeah so it's really wide open what you want to write um you're going to hit snags it's going to be stressful if at any point uh you need to ask me a question email me we can set up a meeting um Two of my FYS, my first year seminars are over for the semester and the other one's going to be ending in a couple of weeks. So I'm suddenly, instead of teaching like 
four and a half classes. I'm going to be teaching three, which means I'm going to have more time to meet with people. So like I am going to become more available towards the end of the semester, unlike most of the time. So like I am around. I am happy to talk. I love talking about this stuff. I want to be there to help you in any way possible. Um, other things of note uh, that we have to talk about. Um, well, actually, any other general questions about the term paper stuff? How to start it? How to finish it? what things you need to worry about, any tips, like anything at all. Yeah, so here's the general way to think about, like I'll just draw like the general structure of how one of these papers goes. So the first paragraph, like literally one paragraph is like an intro to give your readers some idea of what the fuck you're talking about. Um, it can be an anecdote. It can just be like a statement of this paper is going, you can go straight into the thesis as your introduction. Then you're generally going to want to give whatever background the person is going to need to understand what you're talking about. So if you were writing a paper about your own journey of learning English, you're going to want like a few paragraphs on your life and where you grew up and when you started learning English and that. Then the... This can actually be very long, the descriptive part. It Because this stuff is dense, you're gonna wanna describe a lot of information and background, or alternatively, the theories that are relevant for that. So it's gonna be like, here's gonna be just like general term background, then here's gonna be summarizing or describing the data that your argument relies on. So in like the memes one, this would be like what a meme is, and then this is like the role that memes play in the modern world. Or alternatively, if you're arguing that memes are a better form of communication, you're going to define what you mean by communication. Then about this part of the paper is really going to be the crunchy argument in which you're trying to prove the thesis that you first brought up up here. So you're going to want your thesis about here, which is going to be the particular thing you're claiming. Then that by down here, you're going to really want like the core argument of what it is. Um, and then the conclusion will go at the end. Can you play both sides of your argument? So here's... So we're gonna let's miss yeah, so right. here's the way to think about it. What you want to do is by the end of this, you're going to want to prove to someone that they should accept your thesis. So let me just give a... Uh, let me think of a paper topic right now. Um, uh, okay, I'm just going to use uh, the legal one from last semester. Here's how her paper was structured starts off by talking about the importance of law in society and the importance of language in law because they're written as laws. And then the thesis was in this paper, I'm gonna argue that a combination of in intentionalist and uh, literalist is the best way to approach the law. Now, for this argument to work, she needed to explain in some depth both what interpretationalist or intentionalist views of the of legal interpretation were and a uh, definition of literalist interpretation. So she had like five or six pages in which she just laid out what they were and how they applied. Then she went into an argument for why one didn't work by itself, why the other one didn't work by itself, and then the main argument was why when you combine the two, it solved the problems of the others. Now, I think in her case, she just stopped there and went into the conclusion because it was already a pretty long paper. But another thing you can do here as part of that is instead say, now an opponent might argue blankety blank, blankety blank. However, I'm now gonna show they're wrong. Mm -hmm. Or you could even end kind of like open-ended of like now one potential objection is this, but I've already written 10 pages and that's going to be an issue for another day. Like you're allowed to like finish kind of, I want you to engage with the ideas, not like a hundred percent come down on one side or the other. Uh, but that's generally how I'm imagining it. Introduction, thesis, any necessary background, the main argument, which can take many different forms, conclusion. Um, yeah. And, and it's that, which is the same as a shorter paper. It's just, it's harder when you get to 10 pages because the way the human mind works, memory. It's a memory issue. It becomes hard to remember what you wrote eight pages ago. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that, one of the main dividers of who writes a paper where at the end I'm like, oh, this is really coherent and clear. And who isn't, even more so with a short paper of, did you write it in one sitting? 
if you wrote in one sitting, by the time you get to about page nine, you're exhausted. Like the human mind needs more energy. And so if you do it in one sitting, generally it is not going to be as effective. Now, if you want to bang out an entire draft in one sitting and then go back to it later, that is one of the most effective ways. That's typically how I try to write. I'm a crazy person who writes walking around the park on my phone for my first draft. I'm going to get arthritis in my thumb, but uh, like this is how I wrote my dissertation during COVID. I literally went to a local, like what are those railroad, you know, these things where they're like making, they used to be railroads and now we don't have railroads. So then they put like bike paths along yeah. the rail. Yeah. So I just like walked six miles one way, turned around and walked six miles back the other way. And when I got home, like seven, and when you're typing on your phone, you're walking really slow. So it took like eight hours, but I just like banged out. I think it was something like, I want to say there was one day I wrote the equivalent of like 45 double space pages just like on my thumbs. Yeah. Like it, COVID was a crazy time. Um, I mean, a lot of it was bullshit and I needed to trim it down and it ended up the final thing was half that long, but it's just like getting the ideas on paper. And here's another thing about how the human mind works. It is much, much easier and more effective to fix the imperfections in something that already exists than create something perfect from scratch. So like artists, why do artists do sketches before they do anything else? It's just to get something on the page that they can then correct the next time around. So in the same way, it can be very effective to just bang out a crappy first draft and then go back and correct it. Um, and it's, that can also be a lot more um, time savey because you're spending a lot less time trying to remember what the perfect word was that you want for this place. Just like, boom. And then, yeah. And so like outlining, try to outline on a paper this long, know where you're going before you get there, or at the very least, know that when you get where you wanted to go, you're gonna have to go back and readjust things on the basis of what you did. Um, any other questions on the big, the big thing? Do you have a preference between first person, third person? No. Uh, wait, what do you mean? Like whether you say I or one? Yeah. I don't give a shit. Whatever's more natural for you. If you wanna write in second person, so totally fine. <laughs> second person, plural. Um, Dave. How much of time can you click on the abstract? So let's talk about the abstract now. Um, the point of the abstract is for you to give me what would be most helpful to you. If you turn in something, you will get 100% on the abstract. Mm -hmm. And I will give you as in-depth feedback as I, like I spend a good amount of time writing comments on anything, but the abstracts I spend an extra amount of time. So it's really just a chance for, if you wanna give me a bullet pointed outline and say, this is my abstract, because that's what would be most helpful to you, that's what I'll do. If you want to just give me the first three pages of your paper and be like, this is what I'm writing. If you wanted to write, like, you're like, I have a bunch of finals, I wanna get ahead of this. I hate Thanksgiving and I hate my family and I wanna avoid them. And you just wanna write the entire thing in a first draft and give it to me to read over, I'm okay with that too. If you just want to give me like two short paragraphs that generally describe and end with a question like, do you know some sources that might be helpful for this? Also going to be okay. Mm -hmm. So it's really the point of the abstract is to be helpful to you, mm -hmm. which is any other question. Generally, what an abstract is like a traditional abstract is like you describe like, here's what I'm going to be arguing in this paper. And then you say, my first argument is going to be this. I'm planning on bringing up this information. My second thing I'm going to bring up is this. It's going to help show this other thing. Here's the third thing I'm going to bring up, which is going to disprove this second thing. My conclusion will be this. Um, but you don't have to do it that way. It's really up to you. And it can, you can also do it as an opportunity to be like, I'm throwing around these two different ideas, professor. This is my first half-baked idea. Here's my second half-baked idea. Do you think I'm kind of leaning towards the second one, but I think it's going to be harder. So should I do this first one? What are your thoughts? Like, I'm happy to do it, whatever you need. Is the abstract part of the final paper or it's part of the paper? Or do you submit before? You submit it before. So we need to figure out the date of it. That is what we're going to do now. This is the thing in which we need to decide. So please, the third year. Does, does that work? Like this, this was actually going to be my impulse would be like the week after Thanksgiving. Yeah. Um, and also here's, uh, so the abstract, I will send this out. Abstracts do Thursday the 30th. But here's the other thing. Um, Sean, you can, submit it, earlier you can submit it earlier. And also if shit comes up, and you can't get it in on the 30th and you need another few days, I'm not going to be a stickler about it. 
Um, I want you to turn in something. So like last semester, I had a couple of people who like got COVID and turned it in like the last class. And that was fine. Um, as long as I was able to get them something that was helpful in the writing process. Here's the other thing I want to say. The paper is due December 18th. However, um, are any of you philosophy majors? I don't think any of you are this semester. Nope. Um, so you probably also have classes for your major or things that you need to make sure to pass to graduate and things like that. So I'm pretty sure, let me check this, Baruch College Academic Calendar. I'm pretty sure that grades are due after Christmas. Grades are due the 27th which is two days after Christmas. Now, I do not love grading things after Christmas, but if shit hit the fan and you couldn't turn in your paper until the 26th, I cannot promise I will give you as thorough feedback on the final copy, but I do not plan because of this class on turning in my grades until about midday on December 27th. So know that ideally, I, I'm not gonna be able to grade if every single one of you turns in your paper on the 27th, I'm fucked. Like, it's just not going to work. But, so if you can get your paper in here, awesome. If you need a couple extra days, also equally awesome. Like, the 20th, I would have no issue if everyone turned it in on the 20th. If a handful of you, though, so, like, be aware of, like, you're going to have classmates who shit's going to hit the fan for them, and they're going to need that really long runway. Um, so be aware and don't just assume you're going to be one of the ones to turn it in on the 26th. Like, the way I'm going to do it is basically uh, the way I did it last time is like, if you need an extension to like the 21st, 22nd, just let me know. There's going to be no questions asked. Mm -hmm. If you need later than that, explain to me what the situation is. And then we'll be in constant communication to try to get this thing in on time. Mm -hmm. And then if shit really, really hits the fan and you need to take an incomplete and get it done over winter break, I'm okay as long as know that I will pester you a few times over winter break if I remember. And then start of next semester, I'll start poking you with an email stick um, to get the thing in. Uh, but like, don't stress too, too hard about the date. You have to, ideally, we'd all get it in by the 18th, but you've got other classes, you've got finals. So really, this is 18, but really, no questions asked if, say, the 21st. Um, if then you need like a couple more days after that, just let me know and we can figure something out. Basically, what I don't want is December 25th to roll around. I'm at Christmas and suddenly I have an email of like, professor, I need help. Can you read my draft? And I'll be like, no, I don't have time before this. But if you've stayed in contact with me throughout, I can be much more flexible. How many pages for the abstract? Uh, basically, I was thinking of the abstract as like two pages, double spaced ish. Okay. But if you want to do less or more, like it's totally fine. But that was my ideal. I just present like my topic and say like why I choose the topic, how I'm going to prove it. Like a yeah. little presentation. Or, yeah, just something like that about how you're going to do it and whatever would be most helpful for you. So if you want to say in your abstract, like here's what I'm generally doing, but here's this main argument I'm not quite sure. Here's what I'm thinking of doing. Like it's really informal. Think of it very informally. Dave. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. The more you give me, the more I can give you feedback on. Also, I'm going to be happy. So the abstract is the 30th. This is like a little over two weeks. If you want to send me a full paper draft and get feedback on the whole damn thing before you turn in the final paper, I'm happy to do that as well. If you just want to turn in part of it, like you write the first five pages and you just want to be like, am I on the right track before I do these next five pages? I am happy to read that over as well. I am, I, for some unknown reason, actually enjoy giving feedback on papers. Like, I don't know if it's like a derangement or a helpful skill, but I like actually like pulling out the iPad and typing it out. The presentation can be our choice of how to present, right? Like I can print out the paper and have the class critique it as a presentation, asked Christy. Yes, 100%. Let's talk about the presentations. What do they have to be? Whatever you want them to be. And again, if you are like, I am, I know that I've got finals that matter for my GPA for my class, this paper, I need the minor, but I don't really care that much about the paper. I'm not going to start thinking about it until December 17th. And then I'm going to spend two days doing this. Um, or I guess you'll have to have thought of the abstract, but I'm not going to do anything other than the abstract until December 17th. Um, I don't want to do a presentation. You have the option of just saying the abstract will be 15% of your grade. 
and the term paper will be 15% of your grade or 55% of your grade. If you do the presentation, it will give you a guaranteed 10% of your grade. So like you will get 100% if you say anything um, about your presentation here, which means that you're going to bump your grade up a bit. If you take it and put it in here, nobody is writing a perfect term paper. Like that's the nature of term papers. If you asked me to write one, it would not get a perfect grade. Um, because of that, you, if you want your best chance of getting the highest grade possible, you're going to want to do the presentation. But if it's going to make you so stressed out that you end up not being able to focus on your other classes, or you end up with a terrible idea because you're so stressed, then you can just cut out the presentation and add that other stuff in instead. Is the presentation like the presentation option? It's a presentation of whatever you want. So usually, so I definitely want the last week. All right. Um, I'll ask this question again next week so we have a better idea. As of now, these two classes will almost certainly be presentations because my guess is enough people will want to do it that it'll take two classes. Um whether these two need to have some presentations in it is up in the air. So what we're going to do next week uh, on Tuesday before I start talking about anything else is discussing what we want to do, if anything, on this Tuesday, assess how many people are actually going to be here and how many are going to be traveling to Brazil or elsewhere, and then figure out what we want to do with these two classes. Last time I taught this, we literally chose like two uh we just chose two like random topics where it's like, here's some things. Uh, what are some things you might be interested in? I made a Google poll. People voted with the ones that got the most were voted on. And then I found a few standalone readings. And so if we did that, what we could do is that where we, is where we could insert additional like actual similar to these presentations we've been doing if people wanted to do them. Um, what else? Uh, any other questions on the logistic -y shit? So I think what we'll decide next week how these other dates go um, once on, or maybe I'll send an email around about just this weekend, I'll send an email or right now about how many people are actually going to throw, throw up. How many people are going to throw up Thanksgiving week? No, how many people are going to show up the class before Thanksgiving? <laughs> um, Definitely. And I'll, I'll, I'll just get an idea. And if it's like three people, then we can either plan on just like talking about whatever we can like brainstorm abstracts together, or we could just cancel class, whatever works best for people. Um, I'll probably come in regardless. So if people want to talk to me, I can just like be here in the room. Maria. Uh, you have like time frame for the presentation or how long? Uh, the way that they typically went was like, I want to say it was like, be, say like 10 minute presentation-y. If, if you wanted to do it the way of just like present everything, 15 minute time block for whoever wants to do it. That's how I'm thinking about it. You can use those 15 minutes however you want. You can use five of them talking and then like just spend the other 10 going, I'm done and sitting there and then somebody else can go immediately. But I'm thinking about 15 minutes and the presentation is literally whatever would be most helpful for you. Um, so yeah, like 15 minutes. And if, if you like Christy, you want to use that just to do some peer review of like, here's what I have. I'm not going to present anything. Can you all just write some feedback on this thing I'm giving you? And then I'm going to collect them all and look at what everyone's feedback was. That could be a presentation, just anything that will be helpful for you in the writing process. So that when you are looking down the barrel of a 10 page paper at the end, you don't feel like I have no idea whether this makes sense or not, because a lot of people have given you ideas. Michael, is that a hand? Yeah. Dave. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And, and again, like, as long as you do something, like some of them last semester were just like five minutes long of just like, here's what I think I want to do. Thoughts? And then everyone else just talked a little bit and that was a presentation. Um, it's really just it's not high stress. It's All of these things are really designed to be informal ways of getting you points and getting like points in the grade book and guidance before you get to the final thing. Um, any other questions, comments, concerns, feelings, anything? Jane. I wrote like a discussion post thing, but I didn't really want to do it. Yeah, you don't have to you whatever you wrote on the discussion post, like that is like don't feel you have to stick to it. If you email me about it, I don't... Okay, then I won't bother emailing you about it. Uh you passed. Congratulations. Um I have a different... 
Okay, yeah. So if you wanted to email me the new one and get thoughts, awesome. If you don't, if you just want to like bake it in your mind a little bit more. I just don't know how to do um, Do you want to talk after class about possible ways or do you want to think about it a bit more? Either is totally cool with me. And you don't have to decide right now. We can decide once class ends, which might not be, then like that's probably going to be pretty soon. Um, any other questions, comments, concerns, term paper things? Um, again, I have a checking my email addiction. You are welcome to email me. Also, my I shut it off so it doesn't buzz when I get emails. So if you are for some reason having insomnia and have a brilliant idea at 4.30 in the morning and you want to email me, you are not going to wake me up. Feel free to just send it then. I might. The only thing that is that I will respond probably after giving a response to your question with, I hope you got some sleep. But other than that, like it's not going to affect anything. Um, any other questions, comments, concerns? Christy, any more? We good? Okay. Yeah, this is kind of blurry. All right. Um, I'm stopping the recording. So